God bless you this morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I said good morning. Oops, I mean afternoon because it is almost one o'clock. We got kind of a late start today, but thank God we are still here today with the word of the Lord. I was saying um, to my husband that usually I would get a word from God in advance, you know, and he'll be talking to me over, you know, certain period of time of what he wants to speak but all the way until this morning i didn't have anything so i was kind of unsure whether i would be able to come and stand before you today so i went on my terrace i put my headphones on with my worship music because that's how the god talks to me and deals with me and this is what he gave me this morning so i'm just mentioning that because this is fresh matter you know, it's nothing, this is not old stale bread. It's relevant for right now, what God is saying, okay? And the title of it is called Hope. I got that title because I went out with one of my sisters in Christ yesterday, and we were just talking about hope and how the world needs that. And so I'm going to start by saying, well, let me pray. Amen. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the word that you have given me to speak this morning, Lord God. I thank you that it will penetrate the hearts and the minds of the people that hear it. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. We thank you for restoration and we thank you for hope, Lord God. Hope in a risen Savior, Jesus Christ. We give you all honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So again, the title was Hope. Perception is everything. That's how I'm starting. I have that in bold print. Perception is everything. Because what we see and how we receive that information is very important, right? It dictates how we respond and react to all the different stimuluses around us, the stimuli. So you complain about your life because you don't know the man or the woman that's inhaling and exhaling their last breath. Someone's dying right now, but you complain about your life. You complain about your job because you don't know the man laying on his back in the hospital, wishing that he could get up and go to work. You complain about being bored with nothing to do because you don't know the man and the woman that is working three jobs to make ends meet with no rest. You complain about your house and your apartment because you don't know that woman with the five kids living in a shelter with no privacy. You complain about your children because you don't know that couple that have been praying for a baby or that woman that has been traveling to different fertility clinics hoping to conceive. Perception is everything. If you opened your eyes this morning, if you put both feet on the floor, if you were able to walk to the bathroom and wash yourself up, guess what? You have something to thank God for. Amen? Amen. You're blessed. Amen. Perception is everything. No hospital bed, no wheelchair, no oxygen tank. You can see, you can hear. And this is the part that we are called to do, to let everyone be able to have the confession that you are saved. Not only that you can breathe, that you have the activity of your limbs, 
that you have the right mind, but that you are saved. Amen. That's what we're called to do. Amen. So that everyone can say, yes, I am saved. Because in this, you're covered. In the midst of trials, tribulations, sicknesses, all kinds of things that may come our way, you're covered. So when I was talking about all those different things that we have, there may be someone looking at me from that hospital bed. There may be someone looking at me from that wheelchair and they say, wow, she didn't include me. But God said, even in that, when you're saved, you have two options that are guaranteed. The first one is you're about to experience a miraculous healing in your body or number two, you're about to experience the presence of your father face to face. Either one of those two options knocks out the enemy. He's defeated. Either you're going to be with your father or you're going to be healed but you're not going to go to hell so even in that if that's your situation your two options is healing or glory amen, amen. Romans 8 37 and 39 says nay in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of God is tied up in his son Jesus you can't get around Jesus you can't skip over him because the love of God is tied up in him he sent his only begotten son amen, amen. so whether you're well or whether you're going through challenges the key is are you saved that's your victory perception is everything When I was thinking about sickness, the Lord gave me an analogy for those that know I am the one that the Lord speaks to in analogy. So he made me think about my computer. And so when the computer was malfunctioning and not acting properly, I had to call for service. And when I called, the first thing that they do is they say, what's the make and the model? Can you give me the serial number? So the Lord said, doctors, when you go to them, they give you the generic prescription. Amen? Amen. They do what's commonly used for all human beings, regardless of your individuality. They don't know your make and your model, what works for you. So God says, I know. I created you. I know your make, your model, and your serial number. I have what you need, right? God has our cure because he knows exactly what's in us. He knows your blood type. He knows your cells. He knows your organs. Everything specific to you to receive healing. Does that mean you don't go to the doctor? Yes, but whose report do you believe, right? right. It's because God is the one that has the last say. Remember, either glory or miracle, but the devil has no victory. So today, the world needs hope. So the Lord gave me the acronym for hope. He said, having our perception elevated. Having your perception elevated, seeing things as Christ sees them. Because if we keep our eyes merely down here, looking on earth, it looks grim. It looks dark. It looks bleak. It looks hopeless. But the Bible says, look to the hills from whence cometh your help, right? 
My help comes from the Lord. He is the maker of heaven and earth. So I have to keep my perception elevated. The enemy tries to buffer my flesh and keep me bound into thinking of things only on this earth realm. Not thinking of things supernaturally, because when you're born again, you are supernatural, right? right? You're able to go beyond the physical limitations of this life, of this earth, and do things in the spirit realm. You're able to pull down your healing in the spirit realm. Psalms 119 and 18. Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. We want the Lord to open our eyes so that we begin to see things as he sees them. Not on the surface, right? But beyond. God looks through, right? Yes. He sees the heart. So as I was with my sister in Christ yesterday, we were driving home and even driving to the event. She was blasting the worship music and I loved every minute of it. It was awesome. Booming. You, how you see those um, people in the street booming with their rap music. We were booming the gospel music coming down the street. And it felt good. And so we were talking and saying that when you get into that realm and that atmosphere of worship, you begin to look at people and things differently in that moment. It's our responsibility to keep ourselves spiritually grounded. Because when we walk in the flesh and someone pushes our button, we're going to react in the flesh. But after you've come out of worship, after you've been in the presence of God, someone bumps you. It's like if it, it falls off you like water because you understand that you've just been in the presence of God. You know, your perception changes on how you react to things that are all around you. And this is what we need in this age because everything around us is designed to cause confusion and doubt and fear. So we have to find a way because we're still on this earth, but not of it. How can we set our minds and our hearts and fix it on Jesus so that we don't react to the world like everybody else? Amen? Amen. Perception is everything. So it, it determines whether I look at you as my enemy and my competition or whether I look at you as my brother and sister in Christ and a co-laborer. If I see you as my co-laborer, I'm not jealous of you. I'm not envious of you, and I want to help you, and you should want to help me. But when I look at you as an enemy in my competition, I have to keep you underneath me, just like I do the devil. I have to step on you. I have to cut your throat when I see you as my enemy in my competition instead of my brother and sister in Christ. Perception is everything. It determines whether I go outside and I look at someone that doesn't know Christ and see them as worthless or do I see them as someone that God loves and who I am to show God's compassion and love to. It determines how I interact with them. Do I turn my nose up to them You have to have a made up mindset. The Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, right? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. That's the only way to prove what's the acceptable and perfect will of God. So I interact with that in mind. Now, something I did this morning and I didn't know how I was going to fit it into this. I didn't write it down, but I know it's important to point out because I know it disturbed Moses. He made up his bed this morning and I went in his room and I undid his bed. 
I pulled all the covers off that he did. And he said, why? And because I had been talking to him and physically showing him how to tuck the fitted sheet under, to flatten it out, to shake the pillows. And so what he did was he just took everything and flapped it over. So it looked like it was made up, but underneath wasn't. You understand? So when I did that, Moses, it wasn't to irritate you. It was a lesson, not just in your bed making, but in life. You don't want to cover up things and just make them look good on the surface and everything underneath is messed up. You understand? Yes. Because God sees straight through that. We cannot deceive God in any way. So your bed on the top looked like it was made. But when I came closer, when someone looks closer, are you really made? Right. Someone may look saved, but when I come a little closer, are you, re excuse me, are you really saved? When I come a little closer? So that was the lesson in it, Moses. It wasn't about your bed specifically, but to teach you to, to understand integrity and doing things, even if people can't see it, People come in your room, they can't see the sheets and stuff under, but you should know that it should be right. You understand? Right. When we come before you, my husband, myself, and my son, we don't come pretending. When you get close to us, you're going to see Jesus still. This is not a pretend game. We don't pretend that we love God. We don't pretend that we trust God. He is everything to us. Amen? Amen. We can't live without him. So that was a lesson in that, Moses. Even if you didn't like it. Because I know you didn't. You was like, why you do that? It had to be done. Certain things that we do as parents, we, when we do it, we tell him, it's better coming from us who love you then you go out in the world and get it from someone else that won't do it as nicely. Who cares not? If you're a parent, don't cover up your child's mistakes. Don't smooth it out for them. If they keep doing something, don't fix it for them all the time because they're not learning and growing in integrity, responsibility, and accountability. Amen? They got to be able to do this without you. It has to become a part of them. And I want to say that Moses has a lot of integrity and I'm very proud of him. I was just making this specific example about this bed issue. Okay? Amen. So, when I don't know <clears throat> what to do, when I don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit is my guide. When you're saved, when you have him as your personal Lord and Savior, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, amen? Yeah, amen. When you know that he is residing on the inside of you and his power is residing in you. The resurrection power of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's power. He is an awesome Savior. He is our redeemer. He is our healer. He is our deliverer and he is our guide. Our guide on the earth. I was feeling a certain way in my body even before I came up here. And now that I'm speaking, it's lifted. We have to press through physical feelings. Amen? Amen. And keep doing the will of our father because either he's going to heal us or he's going to welcome us. He's the one. But Satan has no victory. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and always acknowledge him. And he shall direct our path. He's the one that's directing our path. The newscast is not directing us. Things that's happening in the world is not our compass. God created each and every one of us with a specific purpose. You have to find it 
and walk in it. Psalms 141, 2 and 3. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as an incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. When you don't know what to say, when you don't know what to speak to others or even over your own self, Lord, set a watch over my lips. Help me. Because the flesh is just inclined to say the wrong thing. It's in our nature to say the wrong thing. That's why we need a, a recreated nature. Because the nature of man is fallen. We need God to keep our feet from stumbling. Psalms 116 and 8, it says, For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. God has done that. Jesus Christ has done that. Not the universe, not the he or she, not Buddha, Muhammad, no, Jesus has done that. Proverbs 4 and 19, but the way of the wicked is like a deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. The people that are walking in darkness, that don't know Jesus, that have not been redeemed back unto the Father, they don't even know what they've fallen over. It says they're in a deep darkness. They don't even know what they're stumbling over. But daily, they're, so, they're, just, they're all stumbling. They're falling. Their feet are getting caught in traps on a daily basis. Yeah. I have the chapter, Ephesians chapter 1. I wish that you would turn there. People that are watching. I'm going to read this entire chapter, chapter 1 of Ephesians. Because it speaks to what God wants to be heard in your ears this morning. Moses. Move that tissue's right here. Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings, but they're in Christ, in Jesus Christ. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He's chosen us already. God has sealed us already. We have to play it out. We have to walk in it, right? We have to come to salvation. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Adoption. We got to come back because we got cut off, right? We were illegitimate children after the garden and we had to be adopted back unto our father through salvation, which you will have an opportunity to receive at the end of this. It's important. To praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. God has made us accepted. We can't do anything to make ourselves acceptable. Right? right? It's a grace gift. It's his love toward us. He has accepted us when we cry out to him and say, Abba, Father. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. His grace is so, so vast 
that it forgives sin. And his blood, right? It flows to the highest mountain. It reaches to the lowest valley, right? That blood. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. The redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. Wherein he have abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure. Which he had purposed in himself. He starts to unfold the mysteries. He gives us that revelation knowledge as we begin to. Spend time in his word. As we begin to talk to him, he reveals the mysteries that the carnal mind cannot perceive and understand. Until you are restored back to fellowship with him, your understanding of him is going to be limited. You don't have access to everything the family has access to when you're an outsider. Amen? Amen. You got to come back into the fold. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, but which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who walked, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. You hear that? Christ, Christ, Christ. It's there everywhere, right? right? No getting around Jesus Christ. You cannot be saved without Jesus. We're not looking for spiritual people in these last days because we had said before, the enemy's demonic people and servants are very spiritual. We're looking for people that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Right? right? Came legally into the family. In whom ye have also trusted, after ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Wow sealed the Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession until the praise of his glory wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints love in it says heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints that kind of goes together when you have faith in God, when you're redeemed back to the Father, your love for the saints develops. You don't hate your brothers and sisters. Right. You can't have faith in God and love for God and then hate the family. Cease not to give praise, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So he's praying. And he's saying that he's praying that the Father would give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding, which is good. He's praying for the saints, right, Paul? Right, right. Yes. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. There's a time that you have to exercise your faith and believe. Does it say believe in us? No. What does it say to believe in? The exceeding greatness of his power. Exceeding. It exceeds anything that we see down here. That's all power. All power. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. 
and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the one to come and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So who's the head of the church? Jesus, right? right? It said he put everything under his feet. He raised him from the dead, set him at his right hand, put everything under his feet so that that is the only person, the only being that has ultimate power and authority, not only on this earth, but in the earth to come. And he's the head over the church. He's not the head over a building. We are the church. He's the head over us. The people of God. He is our head. The church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Your perception and your life changes when you reconnect to the Father, when you receive the revelation of your purpose. All things are in the scriptures. It tells you your lineage. It tells you everything about yourself, your make, your model, and your serial number. It's all in there. You don't have to be confused. When you get connected to your purpose in God, the way you talk changes. The way you walk changes. The way you dress changes. No one has to tell you that dress is too short. No one has to tell you you're showing too much cleavage. Nobody has to tell you that your dress is painted on. Nobody has to tell you these things when you are connected to the Father because the Holy Spirit will tell you that. Not to harp on this, but maybe to harp on it with pride much. If you are a man dressing like a woman, the Holy Spirit you got some kind of block up because I know he's telling you something. And if you're hearing something different, it's the enemy. You can't be connected to God the Father and standing up in front of people as a man dressed as a woman. You cannot be connected. You can be as spiritual as you want. But that doesn't mean you're connected to God the Father. So, what the Lord said to tell everyone this morning is that in whatever state you are in, stand firm. And he gave me the Ephesians chapter 6 of the armor. Finally, my brethren... <clears throat> Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord even when your physical body is weak because you are strong in the power of his might. All power. His exceeding great power is what we're relying on, not ours. Amen? Right. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If you're in homosexuality, you are in the wiles of the devil. If you are fornicating, you are in the wiles of the devil. Adultery, thief, alcoholic, drug addict, wiles of the devil. You need the armor to stand against that. And the armor is available to the saints of God. The family members, the armor's in the house, in God's house. You got to come through the door, which is Jesus, 
to get your armor. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not fighting each other. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, what does it tell you to do? It says, take unto you the whole armor of God. That you will be able to stand in the evil day. And then it says, after you've done everything that you can do in the natural, it says, stand. Having, therefore, your loins girded about with truth. Having the breastplate of righteous, <clears throat> excuse me, of righteousness. I'm going to have to be like those on preachers on TV and get my glass of water, right? <laughs> I don't need it now, though, but next time. Um, I'm going to step back to verse 14. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Because he's constantly throwing darts. They won't stop. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen? Amen. So the, the um, defensive weapon the Lord wanted me to point out is the helmet, the breastplate, and the shield. And then your offensive weapon is your sword, right? Pass me that um, shield for a moment. So when I'm trusting in God and believing his word, I got my big shield here. I'm holding up this shield, right? It's quenching all the fiery darts of the enemy. But how many know that when you're holding up this shield and you're protecting yourself, you're not really advancing at this time, right? You're kind of like at a standstill, just blocking their attacks, right? Playing defense. Playing defense in the, in the words of my husband, the sportsman. Yes. So we're standing here, which is good. You need your shield, but you're not advancing, right? right? Holding the ground. You're holding your ground. Now pass me the other thing. So when I get into the word of God and I have my sword now, this is the only weapon that is going to advance you. God said to let you know that the word of God is the only thing that's going to cause advancement in your life. Knowing your word. When I'm swinging and wielding this, I can move forward. I'm not backing up with the sword. I'm not going to my left or my right. I'm going straight forward with the sword of God, right? With the word of my testimony, being I'm being offensive. So God said, we don't wait for the tax. We advance. This walk is a spiritual battle, but God. So I'm ending with this scripture that he gave me, which is 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15 and 17. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. He wants you to know that today. Don't be dismayed by the multitude of all this nonsense that we're seeing in the world. Stand, right? Stand firm with his armor. Advance with his word because the battle is his. Amen. That's good news this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. And I think that was the quickest one I've ever done, but guess what? It was right on point of what God wanted to say this morning. Hope, right? Remember, hope. Having our perception elevated. Let's begin to 
walk, talk, think like God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So in order to get all these beautiful benefits that we were talking about, you got to come through and accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior. So this morning, we're going to have Youth Minister Moses come, and he is going to give you the place in the Bible where you can get it. And then as you get it, he's going to say, recite this with me. Amen. And after that, he is just going to bless you with a prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So Minister Moses is coming to culminate and put the cherry on the top of this cake this morning with the prayer of salvation and just a prayer from his heart to those that are lost. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Jesus, for you are worthy of all honor. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, these few scriptures are for people who need Jesus. And that's everybody. Amen. This is in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Yes, Jesus. And it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. And so, when you recite that, you enter into the family of God. There's still more to do, but that's the first step. 